cute little village that all players need to work together to fulfill the demand of population. That's Dorf Romantic the board game. And today we'll be teaching you how to play Dorf Romantic the board game, a game designed by Michael Palm and Lucas Zach and published by Pegasus Spiele. And hello everyone, it's Taylor and Tarrant here from Meeple University. Let's go to the classroom. Dorf Romantic is a cooperative tile placement and village building game. Players will take it in turns to draw and place tiles, attempting to score points by creating streams and railways, as well as farms, forests and villages, which meet the requirements of various tasks added to the board through the game. The team will work together to score as many points as possible through the completion of tasks and other achievements and objectives. Dwarf Romantic is a campaign game, and as players score points, they'll unlock steps on the path through the villages. This will allow players to progressively unlock special boxes of new components, which introduce new rules and complexities to the game. We won't spoil any of this content within this video. To set up, simply shuffle and make face-down supplies of the three basic components. Landscape tiles, which show the windmill, task tiles, which show the speech bubble, and task markers, the smaller markers, which also show the speech bubble in five different colors. From the landscape supply, return three tiles at random to the box without looking at them. Choose a first player and you're now ready to play. There will be no map at the beginning of the game. But for this explanation, let's move a few turns into the game and show what it looks like when there's a map present. The game is played in turns, starting from the first player and going clockwise around the table. On your turn, you'll choose one hexagonal tile, reveal it, and then add it to the map in a legal placement. Upon seeing the tile drawn, players may cooperatively discuss and determine where to place the tile, but ultimately it's the active player who gets the final choice. If there are fewer than three of the square task markers on your map at the start of your turn, then you must place a new task tile into your map on your turn. Since you start from an empty map, that does mean that your first three turns will all be placing task tiles. Take the tile and flip a new matching colored task marker onto the tile. This will give you a number between four and six. Then place the tile and marker legally into your map. If when your turn starts there are three task markers in the map, then you'll draw from the landscape tiles and place one of those into the map instead. For a legal placement, a tile must be placed wholly adjacent to at least one other tile. This would be legal, as would this, adjacent to multiple tiles. However, this this or this would not. Streams and railway tracks must be continuous. So there cannot be a placement where a stream reaches a non-stream edge on another tile, nor a railway connecting with a non-railway edge. These placements on the other hand are legal. If a stream or railway finishes within a tile, that is okay. The same restriction does not apply to the other three types of features, the villages, the forests, or the grain. You may freely join non-matching edges together for these features. One of the game's main objectives is to complete tasks, and completing a task requires either a contiguous area or a continuous path of the relevant feature whose size, as counted in number of tiles, exactly matches the number on the marker. For example, by placing this tile here, I have created a grain region of size 5, and therefore completed this task. I can now take the task marker off the map and place it into a face-up scoring pile. At the end of the game, it will be worth points equal to the number printed on it. Removing a task marker means the next player will be placing a task tile rather than a landscape. Tasks may be resolved immediately when placed and multiple tasks can be resolved on the same placement. Placing this tile here makes a contiguous region of six, completing both of these tasks. 
Also note that new tiles placed do not impact already completed tasks. This came from a 5, and even though it's now a 6, you've still completed and scored this task. The completion of task introduces the only difference in the placement rules between the landscape and task tiles. When placing tasks, you may never place one in such a way that the task on it is already impossible to complete. That means you can't place it in a way that overshoots. This is already a size 7 area, so it won't fulfill a number 4 task. Nor can you place in a way which closes off, also known as completing, a region without meeting the requirements of the task. Here I've completed this forest at a size of 3, so this 5 task would be impossible, making this placement illegal. On the other hand, when placing a landscape tile, you are allowed to do so in a way which renders a task impossible. Here I would have completed this grain area of 5, completing this task for points, but leaving this 6 impossible. Similarly, if I place here, it is legal, but I've overshot from a stream of 2 to a stream of 6, rendering this one impossible. If any task is rendered impossible, remove its task marker, flip it to the unscoring side, and remove it from the game. Be careful not to mix it up with your face-up scored markers, or your face-down supply of markers. If on your turn you are supposed to place a new task tile and there aren't any left in the supply, then you'll simply place landscape tiles until the end of the game. If you're supposed to place a landscape tile and none remain, then the game is over immediately, even if there are still tasks remaining. Now count up your final score. There are three ways to score in the first scenario. First, add up all of the numbers on the task markers which you completed through the game. Here it's 94. Now find the three flags. If the flag is within a completed area, that is, all of its sides are closed, then score one point per tile. This yellow flag is worth four points. This green flag is worth one, two, three, four, five, six points. And this red flag, while it's in a much larger area, is not a closed area. It has these open edges, so the red flag scores nothing. Finally, your single longest stream and your single longest railway score one point per tile. So here, eight points for this stream and 14 points for this railway. Everything else on the score sheet needs to be unlocked. Total up all your scores and determine how well you did. Now it's time to mark your progress on the campaign sheet. Find your score in the left hand part of the sheet. Here it was 126, so we would score the 120 range, which is Coachman. Mark in the right hand column the number of the game in which you achieved it. This was the first game of the campaign, so I'd mark 1. You'll now progress on the campaign track a number of steps as shown in this column. Here it's three steps, so I could cross off three white boxes. Each green hexagon does not count towards these steps, but once you reach a green hexagon, it will allow you to unlock some new components. For example, here, after my second step, I get to open box number one. When you open a box, you'll have a card which tells you its contents, and we'll gain some achievement cards. In your first box, you'll have an achievement which is automatically unlocked. And this will tell you to cross off a certain achievement on your campaign guide, and give you some new rules and effects to play with. A locked achievement is not unlocked until you meet the requirements stated on the card, which could be to achieve something in-game, or to reach a certain green hex on the campaign track. Only by unlocking these new components will you unlock enough ways to score to push your highest score up this track to the top. Work as hard as you can as a team to score the best score that you can. And that's how to play Dorf Romantic the board game. Thank you so much for watching. Your like and comments are much appreciated. Subscribe to see what's coming and let us know what games you've been playing. See you next time.